All right, folks, this is a super, super special day. I am going to take this Sena 50C, which I acquired. I'm gonna install it in this helmet. Obviously, it's already installed. And then I am going to fly to Barcelona, Spain, and I'm going to give you a demonstration and a review of this Sena 50C as I ride it from coast to coast from Barcelona all the way to San Sebastian. So that's from the Mediterranean Mediterranean Ocean all the way to the North Atlantic Ocean. And I'm gonna ride through the Pyrenees Mountains and I've got some friends with me. I'm gonna record it and show you footage. I'm gonna use the Sena 50C and it's 4K 30 frames per second recording, all right? You're gonna watch the footage and make up your own mind as to the quality. I actually like it, but I'll be curious to see what you think. And then I'll give you some tips and tricks and some highs and lows of the Sena 50C. So again, it's gonna be an amazing review because I'm not just taking it down the street and giving you a footage and a review. I'm taking it all the way to Spain and we're gonna run through the Pyrenees Mountains crisscrossing between Spain and France to give you a proper review. So here's what uh, the route looks like. So we started the trip in uh, Barcelona on the Mediterranean Ocean. I went up the coast north, um, found ourselves in the Costa Brava region, took a trip to um, Caracas, again on the Mediterranean Ocean, then went up further north, crossed into France, and then headed west through La Ciudad de Rigel. We picked up Highway N260 here and went through lots and lots and lots of twisties. Meandered up north a bit and then uh, came down south and hit San Sebastian on the Atlantic Ocean. Went farther southwest to a town called Lequicio and that's where we camped for a couple of days. Some of us went for a day trip to Bilbao, and then we headed back south through the southeast, through the Rioja Valley wine region. I went through this uh, bustling town called um, Zaragoza, and then finally back to um, Barcelona. So it was about a 1700 kilometer round trip from coast to coast, from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic Ocean and back. And like I said, I used the Sena 50C throughout this trip. And so I think I have um, some pretty good experience with it. Recording. All right. The very first trip from the rental place back to the hotel. We're going to get uh, packed and locked and loaded and ready to go. So we're now riding on the streets in Barcelona. Headed towards the hotel. pedestrian crossings successful first trip. This Mediterranean Sea is pretty calm.
right, all right, all right. We're getting ready to head out. Hotel Aromar, right on the beach. We're gonna go get some gasoline and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Today's trip is going to take us to another kind of beach town called Cadacus in Spain. And then we're going to hit the Pyrenees Mountains. We'll be crisscrossing between France and Spain. We're going to go into the Andorras and then head back south and hit the hotel for the night. It'll be about five to six hours of riding today. So I expect to be in the hotel sometime at 6 or 7 p.m. Wow, that's amazing. People could not obey that divider there. The painted divider. Yeah. The stakes. They'd be zipping all over it. Sure. And we just set sail, so to speak, from Aromar. We're headed north. I don't know if you can see this map here. Towards Cadiz, if I'm pronouncing it. Even. towards San Sebastian. We're gonna hit, hit San Sebastian, which is on the Atlantic Ocean, um, tomorrow. Today there's gonna be a stopover in between. coast and that's part of what this ride was all about from coast to coast so from the Mediterranean Sea to basically the Atlantic Ocean North Atlantic Ocean just awesome We're in this place called San Sebastian looks like it's a party town
Recording. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Today is Friday, and we've just checked out of the hotel in the San Sebastian area. Hotel Silicon Uribaden in a place called Lakeisha, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And we're now headed back eastward towards Barcelona, but we won't ride all the way there today. We are going to go through a winery, Rioja Winery, to a place called La Guardia. good demonstration and on how the camera works um, so hopefully you are in a better position to make an informed decision as to whether you want to pick up one of these units um, I do have a couple of other tips for you um, I installed the Sena 50c in my uh, Arfa 70 the Arfa 70 helmet which is an HAC helmet I was originally using it as my uh, track helmet and then I retired it from track duty and uh, sort of redeployed it uh, for sport touring purposes. It's been working out pretty well. Just love this color scheme. It just looks very nice. All right, um, the installation of the 50 uh, Sena 50C is pretty straightforward, uh, just like any other unit. The one tip I will give you is that I had to move the speaker position away from, uh, you know, the, uh, the sort of dimple of the depression and the helmet. So the helmets are kind of standard helmets and they assume that everybody's ear kind of falls around this region. And so that's where they have the, you know, cup uh, to receive the helmet speakers. And that's where I put it the first time and it did not work out for me at all. I had horrible sound, and I was about to return the helmet, uh, at the, the 50C rather, and then I did some research and you know some other guys were complaining about the sound, and the solution was that you needed to move the, uh, uh, the speaker, even by a few millimeters, to make sure that it um, aligns with the hole in your ear. So I actually let it up over and forward by almost half an inch away from, uh, you know, that that sort of receiving thing if you can see it yeah you can see it's it's quite a bit forward because that's where my you know ear hole uh, aligned ear holes aligned and so once i did that the sound was fantastic so that's tip number one okay tip number two um is you know there's a bit of a trade-off um the you know, angle can go up and down, but it really cannot move laterally. So you've got to figure out exactly where you want this, how far forward you want it. Uh, you, you're kind of limited by this over here, so you really can go more forward. 
And even if you do, the camera will be kind of pointing out to the side somewhere, so you don't want that. If you go too far back, you're going to get a big chunk of your side helmet. I think I played with it a couple of times, and uh, I think I got it right. So that's tip number two, is uh, you got to play around with it to make sure um, that it is correctly positioned. Um, then the helmet shield, I've got another tip for you. Nothing to do with the 50C, but if you're traveling abroad, especially in Europe, there are a lot of tunnels. And uh, so if you've got one of these, um, you know, shields, all of a sudden it becomes dark and almost dangerous because you don't know where you're going. So the trick is uh, to have an internal uh, sort of visor or sunshade, and that can be just flipped up. Uh, or I guess an alternative would be to get a transition, um, you know, um, shield. So that's tip, uh, <coughs> I don't know what tip number three, I guess, is uh, make sure that you have the correct shield. Tip number four is with respect to the SENA. Now, this unit comes with two uh, different kinds of microphones, both of which are placed on the inside of the helmet right next to your mouth. Uh, one is like a boom microphone. It has this big kind of, you know, sort of system. Uh, I actually found that that boom microphone didn't work. So I have the, um, you know, just the cable running in the back and uh, I've got the microphone uh, placed there with a Velcro and that worked out much better for me. So that's, uh, I don't know, tip number four is uh, try both microphones and choose the one that works for you. For me, like I said, uh, that boom microphone really didn't work well. All right, and then you noticed uh, tip number five uh, that the battery kept going off on me. Actually, it wasn't that bad. So I experimented with it, and um, if I used just the communication system without the camera, then it lasts almost seven hours. If I use the camera, you know, frequently, then the uh, system seems to last for about five hours. So all of this is starting the day with a full charge. And so my advice to you, tip number five, is that when you make stops, rest stops or coffee breaks or something, there were tons of coffee shops, you know, in, in, in the routes that we took through little towns and we would almost always um, stop every two hours or so, one and a half to two hours to take a bio break and a coffee break and just kind of mingle with the locals. Um, remember to bring a charging sort of pack and then plug it in. So while you're waiting for your coffee to be made and you're chit-chatting, uh, you want to go ahead and charge this. And so that way you overcome uh, any inherent um, battery limitation. Now, one of my other writing buddies, he had a, um, a charger in his pocket and he was just constantly charging it back here um, as... Uh, the um, Sena was being used. So that's another option. Uh, I actually don't want my pockets to be filled with um, <clears throat> stuff and uh, these charges, even though the, you know, today's charges are pretty small and lightweight, I just don't want them to be in my pocket. So for me, the best thing uh, I, I discovered was, um, was to um, just, you know, in my tank bag have a um, power pack and then every time I stop for coffee or uh, chit-chatting I'll just plug it in and let it charge all right so that's tip number five I guess then tip number six is uh, you know the mesh works really well all you got to do is just press this button once and uh, it is an open mesh and so you would pick up straight conversation from anyone else who's kind of riding around but it worked really well for me. We were a group of about 12 or 13, but then we had subgroups of three or four. And so for me, the communication, uh, you know, if I read, uh, if I led the ride, then I would want to be communicating with the guy who's coming uh, last. So the third or the fourth rider. And I found that the mesh communication system worked excellently. So I've got no complaints with the mesh. But one thing is, um, if you press and hold the button down for two seconds, and this is the tip, 
it cuts off the microphone. And that's important because, uh, you know, unless you want <clears throat> everybody else to be able to listen to every time you cough or sneeze, or in my case, if you want to sing to yourself as you're riding through the mountains uh, and nobody else wants to hear you, uh, all you got to do is um, press that button for two seconds, it'll say mic off, and then you can, um, you know, hear everybody else, um, but they cannot hear you. And if you want to communicate, you just go ahead and press that uh, button. Come on, focus. Press that button again for two seconds, and uh, <clears throat> that will uh, turn back on. Now, the one thing is you got to remember, you got to, you know, every time you want to speak, you got to press that button. Otherwise, you'll be talking to yourself, and uh, none will be the wiser. Um, yeah, other than that, um, you know, I I would give the Sena 50C, uh, you know, a big thumbs up. The video quality is good, uh, as, as you saw. You can decide that for yourself, but I, I have no problems with the video quality. The only thing I might sort of ding it um, by one point is the audio. So when I recorded the audio and I played back, uh, sometimes it seems to be in stereo and sometimes it just seems to be, you know, mono. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. So if that's the case, uh, one of you can uh, put it in the comments. But um, yeah, other than that, I would definitely recommend. I think Sena has made a nice, uh, nice effort to uh, you know, get the camera up to uh, speed and uh, the camera operation, of course, is pretty easy. Uh, the bottom button is what you have, would have to press. So if you press it just once, the camera comes on. And then if you press it and hold it for two seconds, uh, the recording starts. If you press it and hold it for two seconds, uh, the recording stops. And then if you just leave it alone and if it's not recording, uh, the camera will get off by itself to conserve battery. Now it does have just a 128 uh, gigabyte capacity, so that's still better than the previous one. I think it had only 64, so you would insert, um, this is a, a USB-C port, and that's how you charge it. And then on this side is the, uh, the SD card, which again is a uh, 128 gigabyte capacity. Once you're, um, <clears throat> once you've completed recording and you've transferred the files over so we're safe you can come back and format uh, the SD card to keep it fresh um, for the next day or if uh, you want to be like me you can take a couple of spare SD cards and uh, use those formatting is pretty straightforward you press and hold this bottom button right here for five seconds and then it'll ask if you want to format and you would confirm by pressing the button here so press and hold this for five seconds and it'll ask if you want to format and you would confirm by pressing the button here and it almost instantaneously uh, formats um, the SD card. All right, if you have any other questions, hit me up in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little long, but uh, you got to see a bit of the Pyrenees and a bit of Barcelona and a bit of the wine country and a bit of San Sebastian. So hopefully, um, it was time well spent.